Hey, Master Gardeners, I'm hiking again through the woods doing an environmental study project with a couple of the students from McDonough, and we're out exploring the woods and we found something interesting. So with me is Roxy. Roxy, tell them about what plant we just found. Uh, wild ginger. And what's interesting about wild ginger? Can we grow this in our gardens? Mm, yeah, yeah, you can. It's a good ground cover plant, a good shade loving ground cover. And what do we learn? It can be so dense, it can keep out some of the enemy weeds like garlic mustard. Yeah, we all hate garlic mustard in our gardens, but it can be thick enough and dense enough. So let's take a closer look at it so we can learn how to identify it. So Roxy, tell them what kind of leaves they are. Shapes? What kind uh, of shape? Heart? Is yeah, it kind of, yeah. A heart shape. Simple heart shaped, typically in pairs. And we talked about different types of root systems. We said there's stolons and rhizomes when the roots are under the ground. Do you remember which one it is? Uh, rhizomes. Rhizomes, so rhizomatous. So this spreads, once you plant it, it'll keep moving in your garden. This is a good plant for native plant gardens. And the most interesting part are these flowers. It's in full bloom right now. And if you don't know this plant, you'll never found the find the flowers because why, Rox? They're very tiny. Very tiny and what color? Uh, a copper or a lavender color. So not very decorative, not very pretty. And where are they located? Uh, zones three through seven. Okay, she gave a good point where it grows in Maryland. So we're a borderline state. This is a plant that grows here, Maryland and north of here. But where do they? Where are they in loca location on the on the uh, plant? They're laying on the what? Ground. Yeah, laying on the ground. Not very often. Here's the ground cover. We'll look at this in a minute up close. But yeah, they grow all laying on the ground because they're pollinated by mostly beetles. Mostly beetles will crawl into these. So show the flower up close, Rox. Come on in. So tell them what it is. What kind of a dark brown, bronzy, would the book say? And what's the shape? Show it sideways. Like a bell. More like a bell shape. So very interesting flower and deep, a deep flower. So you can picture beetles climbing in and out of those. And here it is where it's connected to the stem. Usually there's two leaves per node of the heart-shaped leaves. Let's, while we're here, let's zoom in on that leaf. It's a, so heart-shaped, simple, entire margins. And here's the rhizome. And what did people harvest the rhizome to make what product? What do they use it for? Uh, ginger substitute. Yeah, ginger substitute. So not exactly harvested much today for use as ginger, but a good plant for that. But one other interesting fact that we learned about it, and Master Gardeners, this will intrigue you, intrigue you. It's a host for the pipe vine swallowtail butterfly, which all of us are clamoring to try to plant pipe vine. Come to find out this is a host plant for the pipe vine swallowtail. So let, look at it here. Here it is growing as a ground cover on, on the, on the uh, forest floor. Look down here, there's a couple flowers. If you can see, here's the barrel, barrel shaped flower laying right on the ground. And if you peek back here, here's another one back here. And then there's a blanket of it so you can get a good view, a great native plant for you to try to establish in your own yard. But you have to make sure you've got it in really good shade. So just take a look down the trail here, Master Gardeners. Take a look. All your wild ginger, a serum canadensis, is in bloom now. Take a look. 